Hey everybody and welcome to another Jamovi tutorial. In this tutorial I want to quickly go through a one sample t-test. As always I am using the most current build as of recording uh, and uh, on my uh, on my Mac OS version 1.6.3 uh, but these features are going to be similar in their most stable build which is 1.6.3. 2.27 I believe so let's get some data open try out this one sample t-test okay so here's some data that I grabbed from the data library you can uh, grab this uh, by going to open data library and this is the Zeppo chapter 11 student grades in Dr. Zeppo's class so when we look at the data here we have ID so 20 p 20 students and then uh, grade in class, which is 50. And so this is perfect for a one sample t test because it's going to be very simple. So to do one sample t test, you click on t tests and you scroll down to one sample t. We have independent, paired, and one sample t test, and that'll open up our one sample t-test options here and then it will give us our uh, table that's ready and raring to go so what we're gonna do is we're gonna ignore ID but there's actually a change that I need to make because you can see that I really shouldn't be able to put in there because this is a ruler and these are the Venn diagram symbols for uh, for nominal variables so really what I should do is I should click on this double click on it and change it to continuous even though when we look at it uh, it allowed me to do that even though it was nominal because this right here says you should have a continuous variable in this box and this box should only accept continuous variables so that's uh, that's quite interesting there but uh, just to be on the safe side, I changed it to a ruler symbol, so this is a continuous variable. And honestly, it is a continuous variable, even if they are whole numbers uh, for their grades. So let's go through these options, because we get a very small amount of information by default, and we can always increase it. So with a one-sample t-test, you don't know the population standard deviation because if you did you'd just do a z-test so because we don't know the population standard deviation we're making a guess with our sample here and so that's where students t comes in students t and that's how it's labeled in here a lot of the times it's just shortened to t uh, so that's the distribution that we are working on, that we are working with, and it's going to tell us uh, about, uh, it's going to tell us whether or not our sample statistic of our mean is different from some test value. So let's go through that. So we can get students T, and um, if you know anything about Bayesian statistics, you can include the Bayes factor and um, put in a prior we are going to skip that because I am not a Bayesian statistician. If there was an issue and this wasn't a continuous variable, you can get the Wilcoxon rank W for ordinal variables. So this would be a non-parametric test for an ordinal variable. So that's the, the symbol here with the, you know a step going up kind of like a bar graph that is increasing in discrete ways so that would be we can get Wil Wilcoxon rank uh, that is a W figure and we get a statistic for it and uh, a p-value as well so the hypothesis the second part here is crucial to a one sample t-test because we have some test value that's our mu right we have this population mean that we're testing our sample mean against and so we need to specify that and we have three options to see whether or not we are if the null hypothesis is true or the null hypothesis is false for just quickly s stating that and so by default this test value is zero and by default is a two-tailed two test we can also do uh, greater than or less than 
if we want if we had a one-tailed reason for choosing one of these. So let's say the test value, the pop uh, the population mean mu is 50. And so you can see here that the statistic for students T is 10.5 and note the alternative uh, the alternative population mean is not equal to the test mean of 50. So I put 50 there because that's on the scale of grades. We'll, we'll say that 50% is the average. And so are people near or not from the average? And you can see that if I choose this, the statistic doesn't change, but the, the direction does tell me whether or not I have a sample mean above or below. And you can see here that if we set it to zero, the sample mean really isn't going to be less than 50. And so, because the sample means probably far greater than it. And, and I can go to additional statistics and actually show you that the mean is 72.3, and which is why we have a non-significant test here for uh, students T, which would be P of 1. <laughs> so you did not reject the null hypothesis there. But if we go back to either not equal to or greater than, you can see that uh, that uh, mean of 72.3 is far greater than 50. So huzzah, huzzah, huzzah. We can also change this to something like, okay, C's get degrees. All right, so 70. Now what is what does ha what happens to my p-value? Well, there's not much difference between 72.3 and 70. So the vast majority of my students are are match the average. So my sample here matches the population. Um, and now I have a standard deviation for that. And so if I were to test this again, I could use, if I were to test a new sample, I could use the population value of 70 and a standard deviation of 9.5 and see, and, and do a z-test in that case. So really, we really get a lot of information then to continue forward with this. We can also get mean differences and get uh, confidence intervals for that mean difference. Okay, so this mean difference is the mean, uh, your sample t statistic minus your test value or mu. So x bar minus mu here, and you get that mean difference. And Wilcoxon has a little bit different going through. Mo Wilcoxon uh, uses uh, different statistics for the mean value here. And then you get uh, the upper and lower confidence intervals. And you can see that with students T, uh, it the mean difference is uh, inclusive of zero, the lower and upper bounds. And so we can clearly see that even with the p-value, this is not great. We can also get effect size, so Cohen's D goes for students T, and the rank by serial correlation goes with Wilcox and W, and you can see that the effect size, effect sizes are fairly small uh, when we consider that the degrees of freedom slash N is quite small too. And then we can get a, uh, confidence intervals for those effect sizes, although it only comes up with Cohen's D confidence intervals and you can see that uh, the uh, it is inclusive of zero we can also get descriptive plots there's not much you can do with this descriptive plot but it does give you mean and median plotted for your variable you can also get normality tests and qq plots to uh, track to see what's going on with the residuals and whether you have uh, equal variance in your sample you know, like the you want the dots to be close to this line as close to this line as possible uh, and then we can get the shapiro wilk test which tells us whether uh, we have an issue with normality and it gives you a note which i appreciate because it's very difficult sometimes reading assumption tests a low p-value suggests a violation of the assumption of normality if all 
the tests in Jamovi include this note. It's wonderful. That is wonderful. Finally, you can uh, exclude cases analysis, analysis by analysis, or you can exclude cases list-wise. So depending on um, who's missing what in all of your dependent variables, because you can have more than one, you either delete by that analysis, or you completely exclude any missing values from any test. That's one sample t-tests in Jamovi. If you like this content, please consider leaving a like and subscribe for more of these kinds of tutorials and videos. Thanks for watching. Bye.